Recovering from a disruption can be complex and involves a series of steps that need to be performed in a particular sequence to get your application back online. Veritas Resiliency Platform can automate the entire DR process, providing for faster service recovery and service level objectives. One of the options available within Resiliency Platform is called a Resiliency Plan, and this allows you to customize the DR workflow so that you have full control over how your applications are moved between sites in a DR scenario. Let's take a look at how this works. First things to cover is a quick description of the components that you see here. So note here, you'll see a few different options that are available. And these are the actual steps that we can include as part of a resiliency plan that tell resiliency platform what needs to be done in a particular order. And down here, you'll see our workflow window. This is where you actually define the steps that resiliency platform will execute, as well as the order that resiliency platform will execute them in. Also, as we can include a name and a description for our plan, some basic information that's needed just so people know what they're looking at. So let's create an example resiliency plan and see how this works. Let's assume this is a resiliency plan for some kind of online flight reservation system. So we'll call our plan flight, flight.com resiliency plan. And we can provide a quick description. And this will be something that describes kind of what we're doing here. So this will be a resiliency plan to bring our flight system online. Next thing we have to do is provide the steps that we want to be executed as part of this resiliency plan. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stop the virtual business service. So a virtual business service is a construct within resiliency platform that allows you to group an application or a multi-tier application together as one logical entity so that it can be managed fairly simply. And in this case, let's say our application is the flight.com reservation system. So our first step will be to stop that virtual business service. And we can actually drag that step right down here into the workflow pane. And then once that's done, we need to provide some inputs. So this is stuff like the VBS name. So the name of the virtual business services that's managing flights.com. Also, we need to specify the data center. And this is the data center where we want to bring down the application probably where it's currently running. Next thing we do is give this step a name. And that's basically it. So from there, we want to add a second step to this process. And we're going to look at something called a custom script. Now, this is something that allows you to basically choose how you want resiliency platform to perform a particular operation. As long as it's something that can be scripted, Resiliency Platform can execute it. So we'll drag that custom script option down into our workflow box, and that'll become our second step. So again, a few inputs we need to configure. So first, we'll call it my script. And we also need to provide a couple more inputs. One of them is the host. And that's the host where we want Resiliency Platform to execute this script. And also, the arguments that are required for the script to be executed successfully. And one interesting thing with the custom script option is that depending on what your script does, if it provides some sort of output, that can actually be seen in the activity details. And this is right within Resiliency Platform, so it makes it very easy to visualize the output of your script, if any. So from there, let's create something called a manual task. Now this can be thought of sort of like a pause. So this is a situation where we want Resiliency Platform to stop the workflow process while you do something in the background that's not necessarily being executed by Resiliency Platform. So we'll go ahead and drag the manual step or manual task down here. And that'll become our third step. Again, we give it a name. And in this case, let's call it a pause. Two other inputs that we configure here. One is whether or not we want Resiliency Platform to automatically resume our workflow process, or whether or not that should be done manually. In this case, let's say we want Resiliency Platform to resume the workflow after five minutes.
So once that time passes, then the workflow resumes. And lastly, for our final step, if you recall here in our first step, we actually stopped the virtual business service representing flights.com. So our last step, let's get that service back online by selecting the start virtual business service option. Couple inputs again, as we'll provide the name of the VBS. We'll also provide the data center. So over here, note in our first step, the application was running at our primary data center. Now we wanna bring this online in our DR data center. And lastly, we give this step a name. And then at that point, our resiliency plan is essentially complete. So all this is done within the user interface in a way that's very straightforward and easy to follow. Overall, resiliency plans can be a great way to automate your DR operations providing full control over the workflow and eliminating the need for manual intervention. And that's what makes DR operations simple.